I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and sex shop owner. And I'm April, VP of an international high-end pleasure products company and boss queen sex toy mogul. We're best friends who make our own rules about who we are as sexual beings. With everything from how to be a badass in the bedroom to top tips for bringing your relationship to the next level, we have something just for you. So sit back, relax, and and enjoy enjoy the show. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another bonus episode on Shameless Sex. We usually only do one bonus episode a month as a gift to our listeners. Our our bonus episodes are ad-free. This is based on some requests that we have received from you from some reviews stating you do not like the ads. And we listen, but guess what? We have to have the ads because podcasting costs money and time and we want to keep it free for all of you. So we have ads, but we offer you bonus episodes so that you don't have to deal with them on the occasion as a gift from our hearts. And we are also doing something where for our other episodes, our normal episodes, we are now putting in the show notes. We're putting the time for when the interview starts. We usually uh, open the podcast with an intro. We answer sex questions there. We give information about our next teaching gigs um, and some maybe some updates on our lives. And that's where some of the ads might be. And then we go into the interview after that. Uh, so you will now be able to see when the interview will be. You may fast forward if you're someone who doesn't want to hear the sex questions and all the other information about our lives. So that is another gift to you, uh, something that we decided we would start doing based on your feedback. We listen to everything that you have to say. We can't please everyone, but we try our best. And if you have any feedback that you must share with us, feel free to email us at shamelesssexpodcast at gmail.com. This bonus episode is with Private Parts Unknown. That is a podcast that's actually in our podcast family, if you hear in our Intro, we're part of a podcast family called Pleasure Podcasts. Um, It's a whole bunch of sex positive podcasts that are all in a wonderful little network. Um, We love it. So these two women from Private Parts Unknown are awesome. Uh, We get a little political in this one. Uh, We talk about some things that might not always be the shiniest, but are, in my opinion, very important conversations. And there's some juicy stuff in there, too. Uh, So... Uh, be prepared maybe to uh, have your buttons pushed or maybe not. Maybe you'll be like, you know what? That was an easy episode. Who knows? Dive in, have an open mind, see what happens. So about Private Parts Unknown, Private Parts Unknown is the podcast formerly known as Reality Bites. And it is a comedy sex travel podcast uncovering stories of love and sexuality around the world. Best friends Courtney and Sophia bring you along as they trapeze from country to country, exploring sex, relationships, dating, and different types of food poisoning. Their podcast is available on all of the podcast apps as well as on privatepartsunknown.com. They are fun. They're playful. They're hilarious. They are also comedians. So um, this should be a fun one and at times maybe uh, informative and heavy and thought-provoking. So without further ado, let's dive on in. All right, everyone, episode time. And we love, we love when we get to record with other podcasters. It is so much fun. And they even had an extra microphone, so we all have a mic. And it's in person, which is even better just because it's like energy exchange. And they're two very beautiful podcasting peeps intelligent in humans funny as a comedian I met here. inside and out i know you did <laughs> and uh but almost, mostly outside i was right? gonna say externally <laughs> is really all we care about yeah <laughs> we're right back at you you guys are Aww. very good looking okay. um, oh thanks just on the outside just <laughs> on the inside yeah 
Take it or leave it. My inside is dark and ugly. Uh, oh, okay, so you're what? from the Private Parts Unknown podcast, formerly the Reality Bites podcast. This is Sophia and Courtney. Uh, we, you and you're part of the, our same podcast network now. We are yes. all part of the Pleasure Podcast Network. Uh, tell our listeners how you got to be where you are today in this, this journey, what your podcast is all about. What is Private Parts Unknown? So the podcast started as Reality Bites. Also, I know you you were in a single phase when you started your podcast. Yeah, we both yeah. were. Same we were. thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you were too. Oh, exciting. Yeah. So um, the podcast, yeah, mainly started out of my, my singlehood and just being frustrated and then has gone through an evolution of... Uh, we did four seasons of Reality Bites. The last one was with Sophia and I co-hosted with our friend Dave, who's also a comedian, Dave Rankin. Super funny. Um, and then we were like, oh, man, we'd done so many local interviews. And we were like, how can we we want to l- expand in some way? We want to learn more stories and go different places. So that's kind of the new bent of the podcast. And we went to Helsinki earlier this year and have been exploring lots of uh, kind of location-based stories and then also kind of socially conscious stories when we're back in LA. So we just did a series on a three-part series with men talking about their personal experiences with abortion, which was so cathartic for everyone involved, I think. Do you just find the, do you interview them uh, like on the street or do you find people before that will talk with you? Well, we, once we decided to do it, we actually debated on how to get people, but then we were like, no, you know what? Like, let's do this. So I just, like we posted statuses on our uh, social media being like, uh, you don't have to use your name, but we're looking for men who are willing to talk about their experiences Mm. about their abortions. And... We, we got actually got a big response. Way more oh. responses than we could include. And mostly positive people who wanted to be a part of it. Did you get the also the no, no haters? No haters. Awesome. All the yeah. men were just like so excited to tell somebody. Some of these email like uh Facebook message messages were so long. Like it was clear that they just needed to tell someone, yeah. you know. Yeah, and I, I, I think I mean, you you share this in that series. I'm sure I listened to one of them, but um, a, they, a lot of the um, the you know penis only individuals who have experienced being a part of a, abortion, right? Um, they don't really feel heard or like they're you know we we aren't hearing their stories. It's it's closeted. You know what's so funny is we hear so much from men on the super conservative side mm-hmm. about why oh, yeah, abortion be, about should be restricted and illegal and whatever. And we so rarely hear from progressive guys ab- about their own experiences or about why that they, they sh- think we should have the right to get an ab- abortion. And it was so nice to be in the same room and hear these stories and also hear some of those men articulate like, I don't normally feel like it's my place to talk about this and advocate, you know, for this. Yeah. 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 And us being like, no, we, we really need you. Mm -hmm. Cause the conservative men think it's their place. Like what Courtney was saying, nobody out there is wondering like, should we be regulating women's vaginas? They're like, no, I have a right to say this. Mm -hmm. But the men that are, you know, pro choice, are not out here feeling like they're entitled to a piece of the story. I know it's ironic, like. right? Yeah. yeah, it really is. That was probably really, um, I guess, empowering, but also I would say freeing for a lot of the folks who got to share their stories. Uh, and and be, and it just it's 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 a it's a hard situation for everyone. I think. I mean, as someone who has had an abortion and has talked on the podcast about it, has received one um, one Instagram message from a hater. Yes, full on hater who had Blocko. to listen to the podcast. Yeah, I got blocked right away. Um, <laughs> yeah, you are gone the minute you do that. It's cyberbullying and it is passive aggressive and uh, I think it's pathetic. Uh, but at <laughs> any rate, uh, I. I, I do know that it's, it's hard for someone who uh, actually experienced the abortion, but on the other side, too, I, I get it. Like I get that there's, you know, there's other emotions and things there. So I really appreciated seeing that you did this. And then it's so why did it turn into three? You just had endless stories to share. Yeah, we wound up talking to five guys. All in Helsinki. No, this no, was separate. this was oh. back in the States. Okay. Yeah, that was another series that that we did the Helsinki series. But. Uh, the way we broke it up into three parts kind of ended up being what they talked about kind of dictated it right Courtney so the first yeah the first part is with our friend Matt Monroe who's a comedian 
and he, his face or his Facebook slash Instagram post actually inspired the series because we were like, holy shit, we've never. He posted about his whole story. Oh, uh, that's the episode mm-hmm. I listened to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we were like, how come we've never seen a man do this before? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he had the most kind of standard story, right? It was the most. I think I think from penis owners that have mm-hmm. had abortions, his story was maybe one of the more relatable stories. Mm-hmm. And then for the second part, we talked to two men who where religion played an interesting role. Mm. So it was kind of a religion oriented episode. One man uh, was a youth pastor mm. and that's when he got his girlfriend pregnant and it literally changed his whole like the course of his life, mm-hmm. his and religion, relationship to God, his yeah. job, wow. everything, yeah. you know, his relationship to God. And then the second man was brought up Catholic. And even though he likes stopped being catholic he like ended up doing penance with these prenatal vitamins that he kind of set for oh himself. yeah oh interesting it was really wild hearing yeah. that story too yeah. it it was yeah it that was how the shame manifested for mm-hmm. him you gotta it, that's he's in part two um but that's an incredible episode because i feel like that's such such a clear representation about how so many people feel and then and then they try to stifle it down mm-hmm. and and then how that shame comes up and how people deal with it and he did this for like a year or so or yeah more. yeah and then the third um installment is like the most heartbreaking one we talked to um a man who uh basically had to make a decision whether or not to have another severely disabled child. Mm, that's oh, a hard that's one. heavy. Uh, yeah, and that's and another was... another guy in that episode who d- hadn't wanted his girlfriend to get an abortion and she did and mm. then he ultimately was so grateful. But yeah, the the gentleman Sophie is talking about it it is heartbreaking because it's also I think, you know, it's easy for us to talk about abortion you know, under more like, and think about a more carefree scenario like Matt's Mm -hmm. and, and maybe even closer to my, I also have had an abortion and closer to my own experience. And then when we hear this man's story, you're like, Oh, (laughs) that's a circumstance we're not even thinking about. And we shouldn't maybe put these restrictions on things without realizing the crazy implications that they could have and also yeah, what else is at stake yeah when is it and also how dynamic it is right that there we, there's this idea you're talking about maths was was kind of more like oh yeah we were hooking up and then she got pregnant and you know stories like that but that there's actually so many more um different, different types of experiences or occurrences of how this is coming about i mean there's i mean some of these abortion laws aren't they well, still saying that that, that you, you alabama can't, it, you and even if you've been in, raped like it's from like you well, even went from in incest, chile in chile incest, if you get a still. an abortion even if you have a child that may be severely disabled or if you get raped or there's incest any of those things it's punishable by death they will murder you you you, you will if you get an abortion get under an abortion, those circumstances? Any circumstance you are not allowed to get an abortion no matter what it's, no matter yeah, what even if the mother's going to die in the child birth they uh want the baby to be born that's rather straight than, out of the handmaid's tale well Hulu divorce was show. only made legal in chile in 2006 i believe mm, Oof. there you go catholics yeah women are literally fighting for bodily autonomy and have been for a long time mm-hmm. and like american women i think are closer to having more rights than fewer rights. But when these things happen and roll our rights back, like the heartbeat bills and all of that stuff, um, then, you know, I think we get much closer to the reality of like Chile. Mm -hmm. We're like, Oh, women are required to bury their miscarriages. This is getting into Chile territory. Yeah. Yeah. Shit like that. That'll really fuck. Yeah. But that's what, that's exactly why I think that we think it's so important to talk about it. Right. I mean, I literally didn't, I grew up Catholic too, and I literally didn't talk about it or tell anyone outside of uh, the providers mm-hmm. <laughs> right? for over two years. It was just something I carried around and didn't and just felt this crazy amount of shame. And I'm a pretty liberal person. Mm-hmm. So when all this starts to happen, I'm like, oh, I almost feel like it's my obligation to be like, no, you know me. I mean, literally, that's a hashtag, but... Yeah. You do know me and you know so many of us and 
yeah, it's not something anyone should be killed for or judged in general. Judged in general. I, I mean, ju- judgment's so easy for us to do. We all do it probably even unconsciously because it's just part of human nature. And that's the thing. You don't know someone's story and you don't know what they've gone through. And I know that there's a lot of these, I would say conservative folks, but even some of that aren't so conservative. I have friends that are anti-abortion and I'm like, are you kidding? And it, especially penis owners that I know this is part of like it, it, hel- helping them be able to tell their story. But some of them that are anti-abortion and I'm like, you have no right yeah. to that have an opinion. So angry. I know. And yeah. I do get heated. And then I just realized that, that it is up to each individual to make their own decisions. Mm-hmm. When, it, when it's not your body, then back the fuck off. Was and it people one of the, to, sorry. Oh, oh, was, it, was it people wanting to control other people's bodies so much? Like, why do you care so much about controlling other, someone else's body? Like, what is wrong in your life that you have to be so mm-hmm. driven and like power hungry to put all of your ideas on someone else? Power is a hell of a drug, honestly. Yeah, they're high on it, yeah. And it um, also, oh, piggybacking off of what you were saying, just because... Uh, Abortion is something that, uh, again, we've made a women's issue. It's not a women's issue because um, it takes two people to make a pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Actually, you know, really the man did it. So mm-hmm. um, <laughs> you, pe- you with the penis. With the <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's just something to think about that um, whenever if you were a liberal man who's listening to this or a man that have had an experience with abortion and you felt like it's not your place to talk about it, mm-hmm. we would really encourage you to do that and like use the hashtag, you know him mm-hmm. so that people well, or just in your general life, yeah. Just, just be willing people. to share that because, mm-hmm. yeah, it was it was a powerful experience for us to make that, and I think we need more of that. And whenever men are like, "Oh, I want to be an ally. I'm an ally. Like, what do <laughs> I do?" And I'm like, "Well, this is how you fucking be an ally. You have to if your dude friend is saying some shit that's crazy about abortion." You say, you know what, dude, I actually had one, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and this is why and this is how it went. Maybe next time you consider that before you say something. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the people we interviewed, the youth pastor, the former youth pastor, he said this really like powerful thing where he was like, you know, I was really against abortion, but I had zero experience with sex, with pregnancy, with anything before that opinion. You know, Mm -hmm. I formed that opinion. So. And he grew up in the culture where, and he literally, he said this, that um, women are abortion, or how did he say He it? was like, he was like, oh, I just thought growing up that women just baby go killers. into the baby, baby killing factory and they're just like, here we go. This was easy. Oh, wow. He's like, I didn't know, you know, what actually, what toll an abortion actually takes mm-hmm. on a woman, either physically or mentally or anything. He's like, you know, and then we were talking about, yeah, they don't teach you about abortion in school. They do not teach you what happens to a they body. They might teach you about it in church that those yeah. women are killing babies. But yeah. I don't think it's legal. I, I believe, and I could be wrong. I'm, I'm sure each state's different, but I don't think they can talk about abortion at all in schools because I think it's way, be, because it's a lot of state funds and they don't support those types of things. And I don't know exactly the, the laws. And I know every state's different, but I don't think it's legal. It's like church and state. And then there's other things that are separate. Well, I think, so I think that if your state... Has has not taken the grant. And this is from what I knew a couple of years ago, so I don't know how it's changed. But if your state has not taken the grant to opt out of comprehensive sex ed, meaning you are you're saying we're going to have comprehensive sex ed, we're not going to take your extra money, dear government, um, then I think abortion can be in there. Okay. But it's when you uh, when you actually take the grant. And this is years ago, so this may have probably changed. But I'm sure um, most states take the grant. They, so a lot of them take yeah. the grant, and then you then they're not teaching, and they're actually teaching abstinence only education. Yeah. I'm sure there's Which a lot that has been proven does not work and showing yes. birthing Come videos on. about babies coming out. Like I saw a birthing video and that's why I, I, I'm like, I'm never doing that. Yeah. Ah! I saw <laughs> no, no, thank you. the best bumper sticker, everyone. It, it was, I was, I was driving on the street and there was a car in front of me and it said, um, hate the traffic, support birth control. I was like, yes, this is a, yes, oh, that's good. Yeah, less humans. You're complaining about all the humans. I say, me. I talk about that too, and I feel like people think I'm some kind of like asshole anti-human, and I'm like, no, I am pro awesome humans. But I think we need to all just be a little bit more mindful about you know procreation. Like it takes a lot. I have Let's trim the fat, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's trim that fat. I mean, our popula- our, our population has like more than 
du- I mean, it's seven point six billion. I think it's seven point seven, and we just talked about seven point six like a couple months ago. And we're ruining our planet. Yeah. So I we're mean, totally, Amazon's burning. Things are going great. It's just yeah. consume little consumer, and that that whole mentality is really sad to me. And it's and we're, we live in Santa Cruz, which is a pretty conscious mm-hmm. place, and the for the most part, I still see so many people over consuming and oh, yeah. living beyond like the plastic forks and plastic plates. I'm like, get that out of my house. Yeah. Well, I, I would just want to say if, you know, if someone is an anti-abortionist, but you ever drive around or walk around and complain about how there's too many humans out there and your things aren't the way they used to be because there's too many people, then you might want to ask yourself some questions. Just, just saying. And also yeah. listen to part that, two of our part two of our abortion series. abortion series. And also they did a Freakonomics episode about the crime rate and how uh after roe v wade it correlated where truly the numbers the crime totally diminished Uh, when abortion was legalized after abortion Uh. was legal after like in the 80s after Mm -hmm. those kids would came of age and would be at their highest crime peak Uh they there was less because there were fewer Unwanted, unwanted pregnancies, mm-hmm. pregnancies. Yeah. yeah fewer children that f- parents couldn't provide for yeah, they grow up in trauma mm-hmm. there's I mean, there's the other piece they, i mean t- trauma is pe- angry people that are doing some not so wonderful things out there and you know violence and hate they, they're not doing that just because they're having a hard day or because they felt like it it's because they have they're some deep deep mm-hmm. hurt or and then they don't have love or guidance or you know whatever that is and, and super limited resources yeah, super limited resources or a really scary home environment and and so it's it's all it's all related. All of it is really connected. I, yeah, I, I, I like. I want to stay open minded, even to the closed minded folks, to hear mm-hmm. their sides and their opinions. And I often find that they're just not asking deeper questions. You know, that, and this is a generalization, but my advice to the world, including what I do with myself and had to learn to do, is not to you know not to just believe everything i think or what i've been told to ask questions like i have a feeling i have a thought why is this here versus it's here so it must be true and i think that there's this there's a great divide in the world bet- between those those different ways of thinking and being and one of them can be really hurtful um, and the other one isn't easy but it's uh, allows for more spaciousness to move to not get stuck in these limiting beliefs i love that i think that's so i mean I find that I have to stay humble to all of my thoughts and Mm -hmm. opinions because, I mean, think of just the way, think of the trans movement Mm -hmm. in the last... Dude, in the nineties, I was saying retarded, like it was my. Job. <laughs> I know yeah. on you know, sex, like, like, whatever you want. A lot it, of yeah. stuff has changed, and, and all of us are on Sex in the City episodes. They were saying tranny not that long ago. Uh, I mean, yeah. wow, wow, yeah. I think still now people say midget on TV all the time. That's still you know, even outside of comedy, they're still saying. I think yeah. they say it. I, I heard it very. I, recently I've heard, yeah. I've also heard someone that I was like, you should know better. Yeah. But I think that you do always have to just. Or, or just that that's the most helpful mm-hmm. state of mind is mm-hmm. just to ask be, questions, ask questions yeah. and be open to the possibility that you're probably wrong about yeah. something. You don't know everything. Yeah. Stay open to that. And, you know, April and I have learned in our podcast world as well uh, from our sex education backgrounds. Uh, you know, a lot of the terminology that we were taught to use 10 years ago has shifted and changed. You know, 10 years ago, we were taught that you say male bodied and female bodied, and that that was more inclusive. And now you're like, oh, yeah, some people with penises aren't using the term male. And mm-hmm. um, and so what, what the other thing that I uh, that we've had to do as part of being humble uh, students, even though we sound like we are mostly the teachers, is to accept the feedback from people and to strive to just do better and be better. And part of that is owning when we're like, oh yeah, things have shifted, things have changed, or there's a new educational piece around language. Um, there was another recent one that we were changed. You know, I just listened to this this American Life mm-hmm. episode, and I guess saying um, Jew is no longer. Uh, it's more. It's I guess it's not acceptable anymore you say jewish so when i people that, ask me that i'm always like day. i don't love it they're like is yeah. it okay if i say it i'm like i don't love it mm-hmm. yeah you yeah. know but if it, Cause it, it's just aggressive yeah i i yeah. just i i was i lived in israel and i was uh w- you know i hung out with a, 
amazing amounts of Jewish folks. And, and it was, they would always be like, but I'm Jew, you know, and they'd say things and I'm like, Oh, that it didn't feel right to me either. I was like, I feel like that's like definitely, it's just, just been said as a slur too many times, yeah. I think. Yeah. So that it's just, you can't say you fucking Jewish, but you can say you fucking Jew. And then it feels horrible. Then it feels yeah. Yeah, terrible. And we have, I just learned that the other day though. I was like, that's good to know. And we have listeners who have sent us emails about thanking us for uh, staying on top of the, the changes in the language. And we've had listeners say that we're irritating the fuck out of them by all of our political correctedness. And I, we have to say, you know, we can't please everyone, but what we can try to do is just be really sensitive. And when folks are making requests for us to um, say things that feel more loving and respectful, we're going to fucking do that. Yeah. It doesn't cost anything to be extra kind. No. So when you have a choice between being kind and not, like, why would you not? If someone's like, this makes me upset. Yeah. Especially if it's not hurting you or anyone directly. There's no, there's no one's hurting. Yeah. A hundred percent. And then on the flip side of that, I think since we are in this time of call out culture, it's important when people make a mistake and then they say that they're sorry or they learn from it. To not cancel everyone. To not cancel everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's except for Louis C.K. Fuck you, dude. You still in the doghouse? Oh <laughs> yeah, he's he's in the doghouse for a long time. Oh, <laughs> I've just been watching that show on Showtime about uh, Roger Ailes. Oh yeah. Oh Ooh. my. Oh, I haven't seen. Goodness, who's Roger Ailes? He was the Fox News basically creator that worked with uh, oh, oh, news Rupert Murdoch, and he was the and he was basically taking blowjobs and ground zero like, of you me too oh yeah it was it was Whoa. and he he passed away a few years ago but i like um at the show it's really it irks like deep within my system to watch it. it's such great acting uh what's his name uh, russell crow oh. as uh is roger ailes and yeah they, they he did so disgusting he looks so disgusting and and sienna, sienna miller is like his wife but it's just incredible to see how far we've come that was in the 90s he just uh that was in like 2015 or 16 where he actually he helped trump get into office of course he and does. um but that was such a commonality amongst uh, so, like just society. And um, we just have to be mindful of the, the reason I bring it up is because, yes, this guy did a lot of very awful things um, and had a lot of power for a long time. But we have to, has to have to be so mindful about the media that's out there and why we form the opinions we have because what we're seeing or reading or mm-hmm. whatever it is. And maybe take, you know, an approach of a wider spectrum of not just because media, a lot of times it's just fed by by larger conglomerates that have more money that forces them to go a different direction. So if you're getting messages from about abortion or whatever uh, class of people or whatever it is, just qu- start to qu- ask questions, as as you were saying, Amy, and Question don't us, be like a lamb to right slaughter. Now. Yeah. If you're like, you know, I'm, something in me isn't fully on board for what you're saying. Yeah. Knock yourself out. Question us. Like we're not we're not preaching absolute truth we might be saying it was it's like a meta experience. i do not have a god <laughs> complex by any means i'm always like i am humbled every yeah. fucking day of my life Critical by things i learned is everybody's friend mm-hmm. yeah. yeah knowledge it's is power because knowledge is power yeah i, I like that <laughs> in your cute voice this is fun we get political i like yeah. getting political and abortion is a it's a heavy heated topic and i, I know it's one. not the sexiest no, thing for us to come on important. we also do fun sex of positive course. stuff on Look, our podcast our last Episode is about a sugar baby, and the episode before that, uh, a is man about talks gang about bangs. organizing gang yeah. bangs. Oh my awesome. god! I thought about being a sugar baby one time in my life on like a sugar baby website. On a sugar baby website, I could totally do it. I was, I was <laughs> I so I could too. I was like, should I leave my husband? Right? You're like, but you, I did because I was like, there. Some of those women aren't even having to touch the dude. They're just like, I'm a companion. I'm like, well, you just get to fly in his fancy jet, and he buys you fancy handbags. But I never could do that. I'm too much of a well, Crazy here's, well, here's not what, what you is, think either. I know. It's so interesting because it's like, it really made us think because Sophia's been with her dude for a long time, but he's very successful. My dude is also very successful. Like, uh, we're sitting in, we're in the basement of the condo that he or, bought. and I Or live, we record in the house that my man bought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so for me to say that that is different, really. Yes. Yeah. How is, is it problematic mm-hmm. because it's not that different. He's totally Venmoed me money because I needed money for something and you, before. And, you have sex. and we have sex. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they exchange like, uh, you know, emotions. Same yeah. with sugar baby and sugar daddy relationships that our friend was telling us about. Mm-hmm. These men have been in her life for 
several years. She has feelings for them. She has feelings for them. She's also been able to buy a place in New York because of them. That's mm-hmm. fucking dope. I did what it all stand-up wrong. comedian <laughs> will do that? You know, yeah. it's like yeah. we're already priced out of like the fucking job we're trying to do by like I'm not many, many thousands yes. of dollars. Yeah. So it's amazing when you see somebody who's able to make it work and all she had to do was like own her body. Mm-hmm. That's an incredible story. And I'm not pitching it as like We're the end all for everyone. A sugar baby. No. Again, it's you're not saying it's well, a for it's, everyone. It's more blah, dynamic blah. than people think yes, it is. You think exactly. it happens one way. And the podcast I recently did with Aaron Alexander, the flirting episode, he said on there, he's like, it was asked me what I thought about sex work. And I was like, I said what I thought about it. And then he said, I said, what do you think? He said, I think we're all engaging it to some, it's to some degree. <laughs> yes. you know, we're all engaging some sort of exchange and it might not be an actual money for sex exchange, but there's dynamics that are happening where we are offering up some sort of energy for another sort of energy. And a lot of times money is a part of that. Uh, and, but we just have this, spe- this very specific money idea of how is it. energy. It is. It's it just really another form is. Of it. Mm-hmm. So Gems, that's why I make it rain. I make it rain. Now. <laughs> yeah. Man, I, I do it. And I'm, I'm usually the sugar mama. P.S. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, things could change soon. Respect. Um, <laughs> I'm going to ask you. We have two sex questions that I would love for you two to answer with yeah. us. Yes. So. All oh, right. This one, because um, anal's the first one. I know we have a couple anal fans in this room. Oh, yeah. Whoop, whoop. So this is being recorded in anal August, but when this is released, it will probably no longer be uh, anal August. But go listen to our anal oh, August Oh, it's episode. anal August somewhere. All the time. All <laughs> year long. So this person says, I have always been quite terrified to do anal, and my feeble attempts thus far have not been very good. I think I have always tried to do too much too fast, and the pain scared me away. I'm a- avoiding it, and I've, always, I've told my fiancé when we were dating that I swear I would do it or try it on our honeymoon if he asked me to marry him and now the time has come I'm so nervous I have four months to get ready before our honeymoon get your ass ready I'm so nervous that I've never been able to get my own finger in my ass since I admire you guys so much what? and I like a challenge I was wondering if any chance you guys could be would be willing to give me some sort of challenge or plan to get me ready for this adventure we have four months that's a long time. Four yeah, months, ladies. That's we can do this. Yeah, we can right? do this. Yeah. <laughs> I have one note, what which is like the first bunch of times I've tried, I had tried, and it was unsuccessful and painful. Mm-hmm. No one told me you have to use like extreme amounts of lube. Yeah. That People do not, not tell you that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Silicone Just, lube is even even oh yeah, the we better. Brought them a bottle we did. Uber we brought lube. some Uber lube. Ooh. So Ooh. we get, so we get Uber box. lube. Box. That's box. what yeah. I'm talking yeah, about. A strong German word in front of lube <laughs> that makes me feel comfortable <laughs> about how fucking slick this shit is going to get. Yeah. So number one, you're going to want to be swimming in that stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Corny, and you want to go? You no, know, I would I would agree with that because I also had a uh, un- unsuccessful attempt or two. Before I really get into the anal play, yeah, uh, I don't know. I think some people would probably say work your way up or whatever, but that's not the way that I really operate. I would just lube her up real good, and uh, I also feel like there's sex toys that I use that helped me. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's, really? You can get um, okay, so you can get these rubber dildos where it's one end comes, probably yeah yeah y- yes yeah for sure. rubber. I, I just say rubber. Yeah. 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 Silicone's yeah. body yeah. safe. We're not yeah. professional. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> all good. No, I want to hear your, your personal yeah. experiences. So though. like, okay, um, I have this this uh, silicone double-sided dildo. Mm. One side is like a thicker, girthier dick. And the other side is a very uh, long, like a but tapered. getting thinner, tapered mm-hmm. situation. Oh. Mm-hmm. The tapered guy, lube the, sh- lube the shit out of that tapered guy, and mm. then just kind of start probing. Because mm-hmm. that works really? way better tapered than just going in with a thick guy yeah and I, i'm guessing she's probably not at butt plug level it sounds like the, i mean not even so, a finger has been able to go yeah in so i think yet. lube it up and mm-hmm. then i think leverage you need because it's harder with a finger yeah so get that like tapered guy lube it up and then just go for it yeah. and, and i would say try to be also stimulating your clit at the mm-hmm. same time because then you're already having pleasure going. It's relaxing. And you relax yeah. your butthole. Yeah, yeah, you're used to that kind of sexy mm-hmm. feeling uh, when it's clit related. But there is lots of pleasure to be had mm-hmm. around in, the corner. There's in your anus. So I much. I think trying to stick your own finger in your butt 
by yourself is automatically you're in a weird position and you yes. kind of want to clench it's tense and, and it's not tense. Good. Yeah. And I don't, I, I would say that uh, like toys or playing like with a toy, if you have to, if you're doing solo play to prep up, just like using that and the, the, the opening and then of the, of the anus and then kind of slowly working your way, but lube. Yes. But I think that to just breathe and, and even in the shower would probably with a toy because then mm-hmm. it's like constantly being wet and you can just really relax and bear down. Did she say in there whether she was going to play around with her dude before then? So the, what's happening is that in four months, they're actually going to have penetrative anal for the first time. And she's barely had anything in her ass because she can't get a finger in there. And so she wants a game plan on how to get ready for this adventure. And my, my what, what came to me is like, you don't need four months to get ready for this. No. You, what you, if his penis is, or I uh, think, are no, we yeah, doing cysts? Sorry, I cut that is out. Okay. Cysts, is yeah, his penis man, huge? Yeah, cysts, if, yeah. uh, if his penis is super huge, that could take some that's time. That's a problem. And so that's why that's you the get thing. the double-sided dildo. You with yeah. One end tapered, one end a thick guy. Yeah. And you just work your way up. This person will have to work up. if he, But it, I don't know the size. She, she we didn't, didn't get the dimensions. We didn't get the dimensions. Or the size. If it's above average, yeah. They have butt plug sets that are small small, medium, large, mm-hmm. and you yeah. can start working with a smaller one, and when that's easy, you go to the medium, Fun then you Factory go to the large. Good, really good ones. Yeah, the booty yeah. plug, B-O-O-T-I-E. I-E. Um, and they have it at purepleasureshop.com. You get 15% off with the coupon code SHAMELESSX. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so you can practice with those things. So I would say, like, just have a night where you're like, all right, it's ass night with myself, and I'm going to get uh, this double dildo of some sort or a uh, plug set and some nice lube and just spend some time, like, really getting to know my ass. And, you know, get it's hard. Get tipsy, girl. Get, yeah, take have yourself a glass of for wine a date. or two. Yeah, get, really enjoy yourself, romance yourself, and take your time and really, get to know how long does it take your ass to relax and Mm -hmm. open up and what does it feel like and like what do you need and how does breath work into there and it it just just like really get to know your own ass as if you had someone else getting to know your ass like don't just wait for someone else to do do the doing i'm also going to offer another piece to this human because my journey with anal too was tricky at first and i was like, nope, nope. And I really wanted to experience it. I used to sell the shit out of butt plugs when I worked at Pure Pleasure. <laughs> and I was like, I know that this would be great. And even when I was, I, I helped develop some butt plugs for a company and, and, and I was like, but I still haven't had anal. And it was really, you know, for me, I felt like I was, I was, imposter, like I was, a yeah, the imposter syndrome setting in. And I was like, for fuck's sake. I mean, I've had fingers in my butt, <laughs> had tongues, but never, you know, full penetration. So what, what I want to offer the advice piece is that, it is a little uncomfortable. It's not like it's not going to be super pleasurable every step of the way. After entry, that's when the pleasure starts happening. Mm-hmm. And adding the vibrator part to the vulva for stimulation is super important. I've also, and we shared this when we taught a workshop. We did an anal, what did, no, it was an orgasm workshop. Um, and we talked about, um, you know, anal stimulation. And one thing that's really amazing with anal stimulation is that it, you can get more G-spot sensation because it's like puts pressure. So if you even put your own fingers or your partner puts their fingers in your vaginal canal, you can have a, an orgasm. I mean, there's a lot going on, but you can use a, you can use a, even use a vibrator that has, you know, an internal external mm-hmm. portion. And that in general really helps relax. And then it, it becomes a, a really nice sensation. Just make sure you're relaxed and chill and make sure that you know that there will be some discomfort. If it's extreme pain and you're at like an eight or at nine or a 10, back away, relax, add more lube, add more lube, and then yeah. try again. But know that it's that the initial entry is going to be hard and don't do the old in out, in out and never go ass to badge. Boom. Yeah, you're going to get a UTI, so yeah. be careful oh. about that. Or a yeast infection. Yeah. All, way, amaz- all amazing advice. I would also say you don't have to wait the four months and then unve- and un- and then unveil your ass to your partner. You can include hi- him or her or whoever on him. It sounds like him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On the journey. And that might be fun for you guys, too. Mm -hmm. And then maybe it'll be even crazier and more. I don't want to say crazy in a bad way, crazy in a good way where it's like intense and passionate and amazing on the honeymoon because you already, you know, explored the I when I was I'm sorry to bring it back. But when I was trying to lose my anal virginity and I'm using the lose it because I really wanted to. I had a whole anal kit I was taking with like I had it planned. Oh, you did this. Uh, I did. I kind of did. And I never I had a kit with these underwear that were made in Paris 
Italy by this mm-hmm. designer who I met and she gave him to me and it was like it formed a bow so you could he could untie yes. it and then I had like a little clip vibe and I had a bunch of lube and then some other stimulating stuff and and uh, like a feather tickler I don't know anyway I never fucking use a thing and I was just like no I just want to like I just want to do this like every I'd bring it on every trip we went on never used it came home one day my partner had purchased a truck and that was the day I lost my animal virginity. He was all stoked and he bought like it's this amazing new truck and he's so excited and I was like, yeah, I'm feeling your vibe. Let's do this. Like, I need that truck. In the dip. truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you That's guys start happened. playing around, it might happen even before your honeymoon. Who knows? Yeah. Sometimes planning isn't the best way to go. Yeah. You guys ready for another question? Ooh. Yeah. All right. I this wanted to talk might, about anal all day. I, well, we have episodes for that that we just recorded. And if if someone wants to go learn more, go check out. I don't remember. Really, uh, it was early August. I think 2019. It was like in the 110, 116 area. Yeah. yeah. Go get your anal on because we could talk about that forever. Okay. This one might stir up some emotions or already did me a little bit. My husband and I are on our one year of into marriage and we have been together for 4.5 years total and have one child together. Together, but three other children so we have a blended family we are both 30 and when we first got together we fucked like rabbits then i got pregnant my sex drive decreased tremendously and it's been almost three years since we had our daughter and i have gotten it back some back somewhat i always want to fuck but we both work very demanding jobs long hours and both get one day a week off his sex drive has decreased at least it seems that way i can be super horny and ready to fucking throw myself at him and he just acts like eh whatever but when he wants the pussy i have to be ready immediately and i thrive off of the foreplay i need to be turned on in lots of ways he just drives right into me and i won't be wet at all and i tell him that i'm not ready and he gets mad at me then we end up not having sex but he ends up watching porn and jacking off and pleasuring himself but i'm left high i know i knew you were gonna hate her him. I'm left high and dry. Insert mad mama here. Granted, we have four kids, but is there something I can do to get us both on the same wavelength for sex? Um, I, I don't like him. violence, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I was nodding until we got to the end where I know. it was like, and then he would get mad at me. Yeah. Because it's like, like I'm in a I'm long term relationship yeah. and it's hard to make time for sex and you're like, sometimes like two ships passing in the night and. You know, and your body's not always ready. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of kids. That's energy sucking. And if you're working full time, are you fucking kidding me? Mm-hmm. And but to get mad at your yeah. partner, that's so fucked no. up. When you're no, when you that. say, yeah, your pussy's not wet and you're not ready, and then you speak to that, and they get mad at you, and then they end up, and then I mean, of course, you, so maybe he still wants to pleasure himself, and like that's all good if he wants to do that. But uh, it sounds like you're getting you're kind of like abandoned and also like in mm-hmm. trouble and, and for speaking what's true for you and it doesn't sound like oh then we both like masturbated yeah. in a sexy way next to each other while watching porn yeah no it sounds like he like was like fuck you i'm gonna get off with yeah. these women on the fucking tv and it's, i don't think yeah. that's right it was, and it's and it's about it's just, there's also this you know i when i ask for sex i get a no but there's so here's one thing i would like to say uh, so there's this thing about uh it's when he wants the pussy, I have to be ready immediately and thrive off of foreplay. I'm assuming that more so is that, that is more of it is related to how he's showing up and the anger that he get you. He gets mad when you reject him or when you say I need more foreplay or whatever that what's happening there. And you're, I, there's some compliant sex in here because you're actually doing it. Like you're, mm-hmm. you're, and, and 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 again, I don't. Maybe you feel like you don't have a choice, but I'm not hearing that there's actual like. Um, it Desire. doesn't feel like it's a non-consensual act of sexual violence. Um, it sounds like there's some scary shit in terms of you not wanting to deal with the repercussions of this person that's getting mad at you and shaming you and making you feel bad. I totally get that. Like, that's fucking scary. And that's why I've, I've had a lot of compliant sex, too. And not just that reason, but for other reasons. But, like, stop having compliant sex. Even if your partner is going to be mad or pouty or won't speak to you or won't fuck you. F- go, they can go fuck themselves literally and go take care of you because every time you go and have this compliant sex where your body is like getting a no and not ready, it's causing little bits of trauma in you. It's like it, you're not tending to you. And it's like there's a deeper issue going on here in your relationship reg- related to communication and taking care of each other, especially most so him with you and you with yourself. Your yes. partner should want to pleasure you, mm-hmm. not just pleasure themselves. Yes. Yeah. And it seems like if he's not wanting to do that when he has sex with you, then then that's not the right thing. Sex is supposed to be 
both people wanting the other person to feel good. Yeah. And if he's only there for himself, then it sounds like it's not really the right time for you guys to be intimate. Mm -hmm. He needs to work on like intimacy between you two without that. Mm -hmm. So you can trust him again and maybe get wet for him because right now who would get wet for somebody who is making them have sex when they're clearly not ready. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a larger relationship issue than actually a sex issue. And that's even harder to really look at because, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes the answer is, oh, you shouldn't be with that person. And I'm not necessarily saying that we don't don't have enough information and that's really only for you to decide. And, you know, but I think that makes it something that you really that makes it even more important. Like Mm -hmm. you have to get to the bottom of this to even, you know, is is he unsupportive in other ways or I don't know. It just feels like. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of questions about yeah, what it else see, is happening. To it, all, it, sh- it feels to me by the question, it seems like they're, they're focused on a lot of uh, the logistics of life mm-hmm. and there's probably l- l- not a lot of intimacy, intimacy going on. And sex is a, is a, is a great indicator about the inner workings of a relationship a lot of times. And it's a huge, important piece of every relationship. Um, obviously every relationship that, that has sex in it. And I think that sex can look like a lot of different things as well. So maybe the, 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 uh, uh, some good advice would be to kind of sit down and with a no goal in mind conversation about sex and talk with him and kind of tell him how you feel in a way that's obviously not you. You did this, you, you're mm-hmm, to blame mm-hmm. where it's coming from. A, I, I'm feeling that this is really important. And we've talked about this quite a bit because, uh, it's, and these conversations, it's not like, oh, do it, did it once and it's going to change. Sometimes mm-hmm. you have to have them multiple yes. times. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of times it's hard conversations to have and nobody wants to, to feel that, um, you know, their sex life is fucked up or they're not getting enough. And, and, um, yeah, definitely take care of yourself. But I think a, a hard conversation uh, needs to happen and masturbation's okay. The wetness piece too, if you're not getting wet, it could be other, there could be other things. Sometimes I don't get wet, but I'm super horny or sometimes I'm super wet and I don't want to have sex at all. So that's like, okay, there could be hormonal shifts. Mm-hmm. I just think that you have Especially a lot after going on. a couple kids and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah, they just that had shit a kid. Works weird. So yeah. I think, I think that if, if, if I could say anything that's really important about this, um, this relationship and, and what to do, which would probably work is, is yeah, sit down and start to identify what is important sexually really and take the time for each other. Cause it sounds like the logistics with the children and the work are going to kill it. And when there's all, all this pressure for one day a week thing to have sex, that's, that's too much pressure for anyone and nobody needs that. It's, you also, but it's not even about that. It's about, it's that is one sided. And it's, it's not it even, it's not even a question of how do we find time for each other it's that uh, you know and it, it, it's one it's a one-sided thing where the, where sex is, is like you said you know for him and not for her and she's asking how do we get on the same wavelength like they like and agreeing with what you're saying April but it's a fucking hard conversation you say you're frustrated you say that you're you know you're maybe you're hurt or you're whatever is going on for you and you be really really clear about how this actually feels for you and what it's um, how it's showing up for you and what you're really wanting and how, where you're putting your fucking foot down. Maybe they need to open up their relationship. Or go get some help. You need to go find a therapist or someone. If it's a scary conversation, you feel like you can't have it with them, then go have someone else that can support you. A sex coach, there. too. Or yeah, a sex, sex coach. coach. Yeah. A coach is easier to pitch than a therapist, at, at least oh, yeah. in a lot yeah. of people's world. So if you say, hey, I want more tools for our sexual tool belt, let's meet this sex coach yeah. online or in person. If you have access, that's, that's safer for a lot of people. They don't feel like they're going to a therapist oh, and, and getting, you know, psychological yeah. Uh, advice. Yeah. Although dude, no shame in going to couples therapy. Fuck I love yeah. therapists. With my dude, I love 14 it. years we've yeah. done it. Yeah. You fucking to- you need it. We have to, it's been, yeah. So important. It's really I, important. I think don't, don't have the conversation when you're about to have sex. Yeah. Or during or sex, during no. sex or any time yeah. when you have scheduled sex, mm-hmm. like wait and have that conversation at a more neutral time mm-hmm. and maybe have the conversation. It sounds like you already are, but with yourself first mm-hmm. about like really what, you know, g- get to the bottom of kind of your thoughts and what your non-negotiables are, mm-hmm. because it feels like those are being tested a little bit. And yeah. I would be really curious to know if what his response like if he would know that she felt this way 
or yeah would he be like do you know what i mean oh, would I he be know. like oh my god i yeah. had no idea or he'd be like you're fucking crazy or yeah. like that's it's not what's sad. happening or it, too bad yeah i mean it's always hard know. but we, we don't know we don't know but yeah we don't There's have the a, answers to yeah. that i'm sure that yeah who knows there could be a lot of love there and everything else could be hunky dory in the rest of the world but and that me, might but, be telling for her yeah, like in know. his There's response levels to the yeah. shit yeah. and we're not like we don't know they they have four kids right it's like a whole thing there's a lot going on there we're not trying to be like yeah. making a decision about your relationship no. by reading one email yeah we but certainly all we care about is you being protected and in a good place yeah taking and care of your body yeah mm-hmm. and it sounds like your body right now isn't being taken care of mm-hmm. and maybe because you love him you've there's a couple things that you haven't been viewing through the lens of like, oh, my own safety, my own happiness. Mm-hmm. And it is nearly impossible to get on the same wavelength or frequency all the time with your partner, especially if you don't spend mm. a lot of time together. That's real. I, I, I struggle with that, getting on the same wavelength or frequency with my partner when I travel and then I come home and then I'm, you know, same. my head. Yeah. And then we have to sync back up. And then right when we get synced back up and I'm like, oh, my God, our sex is amazing. We're connected. I leave and then I come back and then we're like, ah, you know, yeah. it's the same fucking totally. cycle. And I'm like, how do we break this? And it just takes time and it takes the energy of the sit down and like the OK, how can we sync back up? And and I'm feeling this way. And how do you feel? And it's it's a journey. I wish there was a switch that could be like, flick. yeah, then we wouldn't have a job. It's true. We would be unemployed. <laughs> um, OK, so let's wrap this up with just some fun, playful, what rapid fire questions. Ooh. OK, where What's your favorite is color? Just kidding. No, not that one. <laughs> um, where is the most wild or interesting place that you've had sex? Ooh. I used to have a thing for car parking lots. Um, yeah, like big box stores. It's so weird. Air, airports for a while. Inside I, the airport? It's so dirty. I know, In yeah. the bathroom? It's bathrooms, oh. parking, uh, airport parking lots. Like, it was just weird. Going to the airport or like getting off the plane? Well, I had a long distance boyfriend in mm. my early 20s and so that was like a whole that's fun stage but i, like I jerked a guy off uh <laughs> 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 same guy I jerked, <laughs> jerked this guy off in uh like a macy's downtown minneapolis like right wow. you know it was kind of a Where like i maybe room? wanted to be seen i don't know oh I don't, you know, like, exhibitionism yeah, yeah yeah um i like that i think at like you know, our move, me and my man's was like in the beginning of a relationship, just having sex at people's houses during parties and stuff, and then just coming. Oh, back really? Into the party. <laughs> That's fun. Like, I just had Namely sex in your his parents' bed. house. Yeah. Also, yeah, we would do it at his parents' house. We would do it at just friends' houses, and then his mom later was like, "Yeah, we knew." <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I, like I like it. I like it. What mom. are your favorite sexual positions? Mm. I wish I could look at you with a straight face and be like reverse cowgirl yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no i like uh i like my legs over my head airplane style yeah happy baby i think happy baby mm-hmm. maybe they, is, is that what it's something called in that right spot when yeah i also like it from behind doggy style yeah mm-hmm. yeah same and i also like a good side guy when oh. you're just both oh. laying on your side mm-hmm. and you can i don't always think of that one and stuff What's on your sexual bucket list that you've never done that you really want to do? Ooh. I haven't really had... This is so weird to say (laughs) when I'm in a monogamous relationship, but I haven't had really any group sex. And Mm. I think there's a possibility that we might do that together at some point. It's not like a plan right now, but... I'm definitely open to the possibility. You have a little exhibitionism. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So it's totally your alley. I would 100% go to a sex party and like fuck there. Uh Um, I don't know. You know, I am just nervous, knowing myself mostly, not even anything to do with him, but just nervous about like the idea of another person because it is a whole another set of wants and desires Mm. and, you know, things can go wrong and whatever. But I like the idea of it. Um, I think I'd want to, yeah, like I'm also in a monogamous relationship. I think I'd probably want to have like a threesome mm-hmm. with me and uh, him and another woman. And I mean, I've had threesomes before, but not with my husband. Mm-hmm. So I think that would be cool. But I also feel like one, he would never go for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and two, like, I don't know, it might also be freaky. Like when you open up a relationship that's like, 
you're like, I thought we're all on solid ground, you know? And then you're like, wait, did I just fuck this up? Is it more complicated now? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. So Are you monogamous? that's what I'm worried. Yeah. I'm in a monogamous relationship. We've talked about exploring other things and opening it up. Uh, we just are trying to build the strong foundation. We've only been together a little over two years. So mm-hmm. there's just a lot of work to be done before I start to explore. And I have insecurities like anyone else. And I, I am a very confident human, but I do have insecurities. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible, I think, for most people not to in some level. So um, that being said, it's not ever, I'm not, not a hard no. I'm like a not right now and perhaps in that, the future. That's how I feel too. And w- I've also been with my partner for just over three years and I feel like give us give us a few years and catch us on maybe like a wild night. Yeah. I I don't know if it would be something that I would want to do like on a regular basis. I don't think so. But I think I, I might like dabble. Dabble. Yeah. I wouldn't want to make it in the friend zone either with I don't want any of my no. friends to be involved because No, it has to be a stranger. Yeah. And that's something that I think is harder because when we leave town together, a lot of times we're with his family or something and so it hasn't been really in the cards so maybe we'll talk in a year or something and i'll be like mm-hmm. oh, guess what little check in yeah. did it finally did, did it. it all right last question how do people find you and your podcast and Ooh, your information good, Ooh, good <laughs> question <laughs> the most important one five stars uh-huh. <laughs> uh yeah we're private parts unknown uh we're at private parts unknown.com you can get us wherever you get podcasts mm-hmm. Um, we're private parts unknown on IG and we're private parts on, on Twitter. Fucking Twitter. The character. <laughs> oh, 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 you couldn't word. have a known. Yeah. No. So oh, oh, you can't have a known. We could have had like unk. Yeah. Like, oh. What's unk? Weird. Do you guys go by, by PP, PPU sometimes? We call to each we, other. To each other. We definitely but say I don't PPU. Think other people do. Okay, so we're not going to go with that. <laughs> no. Private parts unknown, everyone. Yeah. Check them out on iTunes. They, they, we were just on their episode too, and it was really fun. I had a good time chatting yeah, with you all. We love, ch- we love you guys. Other podcasts. This was so fun. I, this Yay. was so fun. Yeah. yeah. Check out the A side, and mm-hmm. this B side was a blast. <laughs> I know, right? And we love all of you listeners. Remember to check out marginswine.com. We're we're drinking a Mouvedre. It's a really nice Mouvedre glass of Mouvedre. I brought you all some, too. There's actually Ooh, in my bag. Hello. I know. So Week you can check wine. that out. Uh, she makes small batch boutique wines. Amy and I have loved it now for almost two years going on strong. And you have to see why. Go to marginwine.com. You may or may not be able to get some wine, but get on the mailing list so you can have first access. And... We love you. If you love us just as much as we love you, give us five stars on iTunes. It just helps more people become part of the shameless sex revolution. All right, y'all. We will see you next Tuesday. Ciao for now. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com.